Yesterday afternoon, they were looking for somebody to kill. Did you hear what I said? What 13-year-old will leave home with the intent to take a life? Well, in this stomach-turning case, three teenagers were involved. And when an officer tried to stop them, they only grew more violent. Things ended badly. Jermaine Julian was 19 years old. Wesley Dalmas and Leonard Spite Jr. were 13 and 14. And yet, they were labeled as hardened criminals at the time of their arrest. Their already extensive criminal record painted a sad picture. You're never too young to be a criminal as long as you're involved in a gang. This is the tragic story of the teens who fired at an officer in the context of teenage gang violence. I'm going to tell you about an officer involved shooting tonight that occurred. It involves a 13 year old suspect. A 13 year old suspect. At 5 p.m. on May 10th, 2023, Lakeland authorities were called to Simpson Park. This was a backup call made by another officer. Officer Jamie Smith was investigating another call in the area looking for a white Dodge Avenger. Its drivers had fired shots throughout the night in an alleged gang vendetta. When he finally spotted the car, he attempted to pull it over. But when the white Dodge saw his car getting closer, it sped off. A pursuit followed for a few minutes. And then the Dodge stopped suddenly and two teenage boys fled out of the car. Jamie Smith ran after one of them, seeing he was carrying a firearm and his body cam captured everything. This body cam video shows the exact moment when the teens spun around and fired. And you see the dirt fly up. That's when the officer is shot, right? there. As Jamie was running after the boy, he urged him to drop his weapon, but he had no intention of doing that. Instead, he pointed his weapon at the officer and fired. Officer Smith was hit in the leg. Later on, he would discover that he had broken two bones, but at that moment, he didn't even stop to think about it. Instead of falling down and requesting a team, he called for backup while still running after the teenage boy who had just fired. He had an opportunity after he was shot to, uh, to pull back and set up a perimeter and just let the guy go into the uh, into the, the apartment complex. He chose not to do that. He continued to press on, press the issue. 13-year-old Wesley Dalmas was set to take a life that day. He and his friends had spoken about it that day and they wanted to unalive someone. And who better than an officer of the law? However, it was too late for Wesley to do that. As he was still aiming at Jamie Smith, his backup arrived and Wesley jumped into a bush. When he jumped out, a out began, but Wesley did not come out on top this time. He sees Wesley, still firearm in hand, jumps up and tries to get away again, and that's when there's another engagement and Wesley shot. Wesley was hit in the stomach and leg. Immediately, the officers ran over to him to render first aid. And uh, he is ultimately transported to Tampa General Hospital where he was being treated. Officer Jamie Smith was taken to Lakeland Regional Medical and treated for his injuries. He has one gunshot in the left foot, as I said. Um, he's expected to be treated and probably released within the next several days. When it came to Wesley, the officer made a simple statement, but it bore a lot of weight. His date of birth is 919 of 2009. He's 13 years old. Unbelievable. What are we doing? A 13 year old that has has an arrest history, I won't let the sheriff talk about that. Not only did Wesley Dalmas attempt to unalive an officer with a stolen handgun, but he was already, in the law enforcement department's words, a hardened criminal. And also has the fortitude and the anger inside of him to turn around and point a handgun at a police officer, and not only point that handgun, but take a shot at a police officer. He is making a strong point. How can a kid harbor that much hatred? What has happened to him before to act this way? By the end of that day, three teenage boys were in custody. 19-year-old Jermaine Julian, 13-year-old Wesley Dalmas, and 14-year-old Leonard Spite Jr. It turns out they all had extensive criminal records at that point. There was another stolen firearm in the car, and they were on probation for several violent crimes. All three are on probation for previous arrests, such as attempted burglary. All three boys had several run-ins with the law, but somehow it seemed like the more they got in trouble, the more violent their crimes got. Arrests were not a cold shower to them. They were reasons to hate law enforcement more. However, this was not a war or a vendetta as far as authorities were concerned. The law is there to protect people from harm. 
The boys did not see it this way though. When they saw that officer that day, they were all happy to take his life. Luckily, their plan didn't come to fruition. Still, that begs the question, why are three teens, two of them so young, this violent. After Sheriff Grady Judd identified the boys to the public, he also spoke of their shockingly young age. But he said something else too, addressing all those people who were looking at the three teens with pity. But I am sick to my stomach of them going, oh, did you know his age? It doesn't make any difference. If you're old enough to hold a gun and point it at a cop and pull the trigger, you're old enough to be shot or to go to jail and then shooting up neighborhoods, shooting up other gang members, and shooting police officers with your gun because you're not responsible in how you care for that gun. And I'll give you one little piece of news. They'll also shoot you with your gun that they take out of the car if they get a chance. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at the teens is with the knowledge that they were part of a gang. This is the norm, which it shouldn't be. This is what we have to go through as young people all the time. And seeing this on the news is, you know, something that we've seen before and many times again, and it needs to stop. Gang culture is the same all around the world. Older members recruit young teens, sometimes children, from vulnerable backgrounds and lure them with false promises. Protection, money, or a simple sense of belonging can make a teen from a troubled home join a gang. Then, they're all given a weapon and manipulated into using it on someone. In some gangs, this is a part of their official initiation. In others, you're just taught to hit first and ask questions later. Sometimes it can be queasy, like, you don't know how they're going to use that. You know, if we have an argument, are you, are you going to use it or is it just as a thing, as a show, just to protect yourself? Whether it's knives or firearms, Fatal damage can be done in a matter of seconds, and many times it's young teens who do it. They're the most prone to not thinking their actions through. So why are people carrying weapons? Uh, there's many factors. Trauma, um, not having a, a father figure in the house, um, seeing crimes from a young age and thinking that it's okay and no one's told them that it's not okay. In the UK, there are organizations working hard to prevent teens from joining gangs. It's a more peaceful approach than the use of officer force in the US. Of course, it's not enough, but it may be the only way to make sure future generations have fewer children willing to join a gang. Early intervention, work hard at the roots. We've got to do that. And that, by the way, isn't about yet more money. It's about spending the budgets that we have wisely. Here's the psychological twist. Potential. If you feel you have potential in life, if you feel there's a possibility, you might go on to have an interesting career, you might fall in love, you might have, a, you know, a, a great life, then you're much less likely to get caught up in, you know, drugs or knives mm. or guns or any of those things. But if you feel you have no potential, you feel you've got nothing to lose. You don't value your own life because you think you're not going to go anywhere and nothing's ever going to happen that's worth living. And you don't value anyone else's either. It's truly heartbreaking to realize that so many many teens believe this about themselves. This should be the age of daydreaming and reaching for the stars. Sadly though, poverty, neglectful families, and violent backgrounds don't provide teens with the fuel to dream big. And then of course, if you live in an area where violence is normalized, you're much more likely to pick it up too. However, it's a false impression that carrying a weapon keeps you safe. Because one way or another, you're likely to use it ending up on the wrong side of the law and potentially causing great harm. Carry a knife, you'll, you think it's for your own protection, then the chances of your being killed or wounded very badly or in, indeed killing somebody else or wounding them very badly go up immeasurably in terms of percentages. This is the sad reality of teenagers and gangs. Promises of belonging, safety, and protection turn into violence, paranoia, and constant danger. Shame on you. You're hiding criminals who are shooting at neighbors, who are shooting in neighborhoods, who are shooting at innocent people. During his press conference, Sheriff Grady Judd criticized the media for protecting the teenagers' identities. Of course, in many states and other countries, when a perpetrator is under the age of 18, their identity is protected from the public, at least until the end of their trial. 
According to Grady Judd, though, this goes against our obligation to raise awareness around the perpetrator. Wouldn't you want to know if one of your neighbors is a known criminal? If you know someone who has committed a crime, wouldn't you report them to authorities? What if they're 13? That's where it gets murky. They're dangerous felons. To Grady Judd, it's this simple. And the proof, he says, lies in what they were doing on May 10th. They were riding around in Julian's vehicle. Julian is 19. Jermaine Julian, who's driving his mama's car, leaves it to ride off by itself, sideswiping some poor innocent person probably trying to come home from work. Jermaine left the car to drive on its own as he fled the scene. Leonard hid the stolen firearm under the seat and fled on foot too. Wesley, the youngest of the three, took the weapon with him and ended up firing at Officer Jamie Smith. But if you think the other two boys were more peaceful than Wesley, you might be wrong. According to the sheriff, that afternoon the boys had intentionally gathered to smoke weed and look for opposition. Because they were looking for an op. You know what an op is? Opposition. Wesley is an associate gang member. See, he's associates of gang members. Jermaine has been determined to be a gang member at 19. Leonard, at only 14, is determined to be a gang member. An OP is an opportunity to aim and fire at opposition. In other words, go looking for trouble, escalate the conflict, and then find an excuse to take a life. Obviously, they found them because that's they got in the direction of someone. Did that someone report to the police? We have no idea. That's what got Officer Jamie Smith to investigate their car and attempt to pull it over. Do you know that all three of these people were on active probation. All three of them. Once more, the sheriff wanted to make it clear how little he thought Wesley's age mattered in this incident. Even though his chronological age is 13, he's a hardened criminal who will shoot you because if you'll shoot the cops, you'll shoot anybody. Wesley and Leonard were on probation for the same incident. They'd broken into a car some months prior. One of the conditions of their probation was not to spend any more time together. Not only were they caught together, but they were caught using two stolen handguns. Jermaine has an even more extensive criminal record. He's had six arrests in the past, four VOP felonies, and two straight up felony criminal charges. The sheriff is not wrong. These are dangerous people, no matter their age. Still, it's tragic that so many young people get roped into gangs and desensitized to violence before they can grow into sensible adults. At the end of May 2023, it was reported that Lakeland law enforcement was officially investigating teenage gang activity in the area. Just one week after the Wesley Dalmas incident, a 15-year-old boy tried to rob a McDonald's at gunpoint. Although this begs the open question, do kids like Wesley, Leonard, and Jermaine not want to be safe? Or are they misguided by other gang members into choosing violence as a way of keeping themselves safe? If you live in a dangerous environment, violence starts to look like a good safety measure. Still, when do you become responsible for your actions? It's one thing to be a young teen from a potentially vulnerable background, but it's a whole other thing to be a criminal charged with attempted murder. It's a complicated conversation with no apparent answer. As of late 2023, Wesley, Leonard, and Jermaine are still awaiting sentencing. Until then, what can we do to prevent other kids from acting this way? Thanks for watching, you guys. What do you think about this case? Do you know similar stories? Let me know in a comment and before you leave, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. See you next time.